Greetings, 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 everyone. Steve, Pair of Quarters of Kindness. How are you doing today? Hopefully your weaving's been happy. Okay, what I have for you today is I'm going to show you how I make a stitched old Nabaga Naga. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. If not, I apologize. I don't know. It's a Japanese word. This is a Cetus weave. It's not a hard one, but it looks extremely well. And due to the nature of all the overs and unders in the stitching, it does take some time. But it's not a very difficult one. And if you choose the right colors, this thing looks great. This is the one we're going to be making today. I put it on a brush brass buckle. It's midnight blue with smoke gray accent and center stitch. And the outer is gold. Just give you a look at this. Hold it up here so you can see how thick this one turned out, for me anyway. It's not a very thick one. But this one looks really, really good. But if you want to see how I do this, and you want all the tips and tricks and insights that this channel is known for, stick around because we'll get right into it, folks. Okay, folks, I'm back. I'm set up. And uh, we'll get into this in just a second. But as always, I'm a shameless plug, if you will. I'm not going to share any links or anything. Some of you may have seen some of my last videos, and I mentioned I'm trying to expand my skill set into, you know, beaded bracelets, stretchy beaded bracelets. These are, these are pretty simple to make. Um, but I'm also trying to expand into actually making jewelry. I made my other half a set of earrings the other day. She said, can you, th you think you can make me some earrings? I said, yeah, I had to buy the stuff and figure out exactly how to do it. And that was my first attempt. I didn't post those or anything. I just made them and gave them to her or whatever. But I, um, I've been making some of these, getting some beads and various things. But um, that's that. Uh, let's see. The other thing, this right here, I made this, I figured I would mention this, I made this the other day, a lot of people seem to like this, it's not a very complicated bracelet, all it is is a four strand trilobite, and if you can see it, it's, I don't know how well that's showing up on the camera, but I've double stitched it down there either side, it's maroon, and uh, anthracite is the darker color, and then smoke gray, but the, the bead, it's not really a bead right here. What this actually is, is, um, I would call it a button, technically is what I would call it. Now, I'm sure there, there, there's a technical name for the type of button this is, but I don't know what it is. Now, I'll say this, I found this on Amazon, and if I remember, I'll put the link below f for it. Um, but it's, it's marketed as, you know, a bead for paracord and I'll show you what it looks like you'll see this and some of you out there if you know what this what the technical name of this type of button is called put it in the comments below because I have no idea it's not your standard typical you know cheap looking plastic button with four holes that you just stitch through to the garment this is one of those that would be on a dress uniform now I know I was in the military and our buttons on our dress uniforms were like this they had this, here's another one I have, just like it here. Let's turn it around so it's right side up, if you can see that. But the back of it has this little loop piece on it. And this would be sewn onto a garment as a, you know, as a dress type, on a dress type outfit, you know. That's a formal type outfit, I guess, it would be another way of putting it. But that's what I saw it as, as a button. And when I ordered these things, I saw, there's a video on YouTube, I forget what channel it is, but the man has made basically a cobra bracelet and a knot and loop style closure. But instead of the knot, he's put a button, one of these type of buttons that has this loop on it. And that's what he's threaded his paracord through, and the button 
goes through the loop and acts as the closure. Instead of the knot, it's a buttoning loop, I guess you would call it. But like I said, I don't know what, technically, I'm sure this type of button has a name. But I don't know what it is. But that's what this is. And all I did on this, so for those who, you know, have commented and wondered about it, all I did, just like anything, when you go to set up your full core strand on your jig, you have to put that button on those two center strands. And you start it with it down here. And you just begin weaving. And when you get to where you want the button to be, you slide it up into place. And then you just weave on around it. Right, and being that this the way this is, this one's pretty simple. It's not that hard. The hardest thing is to make sure you've got it centered. So when you do the weaving, the button is centered directly opposite of the buckle. You know, and you just kind of eyeball it. And, you know, like me, when I did it, I'll be honest with you, I'm not perfect at all this. I weaved the thing out, and I got to look, I said, it's not centered. I didn't need to move it a little bit, so I had to unweave it, weave two or three more times, and then put the button, slide the button back into position, and then keep weaving. And when I got done, I said, yep, that's where I want it. You know? And then I just come back and do the stitching, which is not hard. It just takes a little time. That's all it is. It's not hard. It's not anything, you know, but it looks really well. And I think the colors, I wasn't sure about the colors at first, but I think they ended up, I didn't know if they were going to work together good, but they ended up playing very nicely together. So there we go. All right. With all that said, let's get to this bracelet. I figured I'd throw that out there. Um, and, and here, here's the point of me talking about the button. Um, these type buttons, you can go to, you know, a, I, get, I don't know if a craft store would sell them or not, but I know like a fabric store where you would go buy textiles and sewing material and things like that. They would have stuff like that. You could probably find some stuff like that at, you know, Walmart or somewhere like that. I don't know if a craft store like Michael's or Hobby Lobby would have things like that or not. They may, though. But that's all it is, is a button. And they can be used on, you know, a trilobite-type type, trilobite type bracelet. You know, you just got to sit down, like I tell everybody, tell everybody, you just got to sit down and think about this stuff. How can I use that, incorporate that into this, and how would I do it, and all this kind of stuff? And you try it out, and there you go. Okay, now, with all that, let's get to this. This bracelet right here, it, it's not a very hard one. Um, it takes some time, though. It just takes time, because um, the stitching, obviously, especially the center stitching, it takes a little time to do. It's not hard. It just takes time. Um, now the weave itself is not really hard either, but it does have, <laughs> like a lot of the ones I've been doing that are from C, this 550. Many of you know who he is, so he gets credit for this. Um, it, there's a lot of overs and uh, like one repetition is a lot of overs and unders, and then you got to be able to pull that night tot. And this one, same way. That's what takes takes so long. It's all the overs and unders and then tightening it up and then going to the next weave or the next repetition and just doing it. You see what I'm saying? But it's not really that hard. Okay, now, let's see. I'm not even sure how to pronounce this. Old Naba Naga, I think is how it's pronounced. I had to look that up. Um, apparently, this is some person in Japanese history who was... Either he was a, you know, an ancient samurai or just a, simply a military leader of Japanese history. Didn't do any further research into that. I just, I figured because in the Cedis books, he's got a whole section on samurai. Some of the bracelets are named after a fam famous samurai, I would assume. And he's got this bracelet in one of the books in that section of the samurai, and then in the third book, he's got this same bracelet, and this is the modified version. This is not the original. This is the modified. So if you look this up on YouTube, I'll go ahead and tell you, if you look this up on YouTube, you're going to find a couple of videos for the original and then the modified. And if you watch the one, I know there's one. There may be more than one, but I know there's one for the modified version. And if you watch that... 
He's not doing it. He's not setting it up. He's not doing the weave itself the same as what's in Cetus' book. Now, the finished product looks the same, but he's not doing it quite the same. And I know when I started watching that, you know, looking in, in the books, because I have to see these books, I was looking in the book, and then I was watching this tutorial video, and I'm like, that's not that, but I sat there and watched it, and I'm like, well, it looks the same, you know, after he wo has woven it, it looks the same, but he's not setting it up, and he's not quite weaving it the same way, so I'm going to show you the way I do this, and I've pretty much followed how Cetus has it in his book, now, for that, like I said, Cetus, it's in uh, his live paracord volume 3 page 116 and this is the modified version um I'm putting this one today after I've made it I usually try to I've said this before I usually try to put my, the buckle I choose the size of the buckle will be proportionate to the width of the bracelet does that make sense you don't want to have a big wide buckle on a real thin bracelet to me, that doesn't look right. But this bracelet is one that you could use either, and to me, my personal opinion, my personal preference, you could either use a 15 millimeter, which is a 5 8 inch, or a 20 millimeter, which is a 3 quarter inch, and they would both look well. Um, I'm using a 20 millimeter, or 3 quarter inch today, and it's going to be, it's brushed brass is what it is. Um, but the colors I got is midnight blue, Smoke gray is going to be the little accent stripes, and I'm going to stitch it as of right now. The center stitch is going to be also in smoke gray, and the little stitching on the sides I'm going to do in gold. And I'm going to do it in, instead of using micro cord on the side stitching, I'm going to use 95. In fact, what I have is 100 because it's, I've gotten it from Paracord EU and they're, they don't sell 95. Theirs is 100. Which, the difference is so negligible, so small that it's negligible. I want to say one is like 0.75 and this is point like nine or something, the diameter of the cord. So it's not much different. But technically it is 100. But it would be like if you was going to go buy that type of that thickness of cord from an American supplier, it'd be labeled as 95. And the reason I do that, like I've said in quite a few of my videos, when you do that stitching around the side in between the little pieces, because there's a gap in every one of these wraparounds, the little piece of micro cord has a tendency to go that fall in between the cracks and get lost. And if it's a there's not a lot of contrast between this, whatever cord you're using to do that stitching on the side and the color of the main bracelet, you're not going to see it as well. So, in this instance, I'm going to use gold. That's what I'm thinking. I may, it may change before I get to that. <laughs> but I'm going to use gold 100. And that's going to be, you know, the contrast between the two colors is going to, that and the thickness is going to allow it to be seen better. And I thought the gold will match the brass, the gold color of the brass buckle. That's that's my idea anyway. Okay, now with all that said, let's see. Um, all the measurements are going to be down below. So check all that out. Now, I've cut a little bit more than I, because I'm making this, all my measurements, all my measurements I have written down are from a 7 inch wrist which is made. But I'm making this for a slightly larger wrist. This is for a customer. This is going to be for a 7 and 3 quarter inch wrist. So I've cut this slightly larger. Right? But the measurements I'm going to put below will be for a 7 inch wrist. And all the, all the cord lengths will be for a 7 inch wrist. So if your wrist is bigger or smaller, You'll just have to guesstimate, or, you know, however. Okay, now, with that said, this one is one of those that you've heard me talk about this before. That the you set up your core, and then you get the orientation of your strands. This one has an offset working end, meaning 
all the slack, instead of having two working ends coming out the top of equal length that both get woven into the bracelet, this one is not like that. This one only has one. And this little bit right here would be a working end, but you offset the length of it so it all comes out on one side, right? If, you do, if you're unfamiliar with this, look in the description below. There's a link to a playlist, Core Strand Setup Playlist. Look at look at that playlist, and there's two videos. There's a, a deep cut, which is where I go and explain all kind of stuff and in detail, and then there's a shallow cut, which is a shorter type video. But it's, the video is called, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the video is called How to Set Up a Four Strand Core with an Offset Working End. It's not hard. You basically, the way I do it is I start at this knot up top and thread my cord all the way through, right? And then when I go to tighten it up, instead of starting in the center hinge and, hitch and tightening, tightening outward, I I start at this top knot and tighten it, tighten this one, and I work my way across. That way all the slack comes out this side. Make sense? And this, the, the only thing different about this one, now let me zoom in and uh, hopefully you will be able to see this. If you look, like I said, this right here is not going to get used. The only reason I have this so long is so after I finish the bracelet, I'm going to take this and I'll attach my fit or my lacing in and I'm going to back weave it into the back of the bracelet so it gets hidden. That's why I left that much length on there. Now, before we start weaving, I'm going to just clip it up here to get it out of my way. Okay, um, but this right here, the, the actual working end we're going to use. You've seen my videos. If you don't know how I set up my core strand, watch the core strand setup playlist. Watch that. That's something I tell everybody. If you want to learn how to do this, get very familiar. Learn how to set up your various core setups. Two strand, four strand, six strand, eight strand, you know, all the different ways. Get familiar with that because I know for me, when I first started, I would say something and it would be like a four strand core or a six strand core. And I was like, ah. Oh. And I'd struggle with all that. And then when I actually got to the point of doing the bracelet, the bracelet and weaving out was easy. It was getting the cord. So I just said, you know what? Sit down and just practice these things and learn these things. Get good at the core strand setups. That way they are not a stumbling block for you. Right? Okay. But anyway, um, the way I do this, I took, do this little, little knot at the top and the core hang, this, the, the excess would hang out on either end. Well, on this side, all I've done is do this knot in reverse. That way, instead of having the working end hanging out this way, it, it hangs, it, it comes back this way. And all I've done was tuck it into this hitch, the middle hitch, this cow hitch at the top, and I've got it coming out between those two pieces that form that cow hitch. So it's basically coming out the center, right? That's all it is. And your, your accent piece is just threaded through all the hitches, and it's centered. Makes sense? That's all it is. Okay, now, with all that said, I know I talk a lot, but I try to explain this so people will understand uh, understand this better. Now, like I said, this one is not really that hard, and I'm going to show you how I do this. This one, because it's got so many overs and unders, and you got to tighten it, I've, I've tried this quite a few different ways. You know, ultimately, all the overs and unders are the same. It's, it's, it comes down to, do you want to run this cord over and under, under first and then follow with the other cord? Or do you want to do this one first? You see what I'm saying? And it's all kind of different ways. Once you get, once you look at it and you go, okay, I see this one's supposed to go over here and under there and all that. Or, and you see how it's supposed to be. You can do it any way you want. As long as you get to that final product where all the overs and unders are the same way, and then you just tighten it up. I've tried it quite a few different ways, and this is what I come up with. Okay, so let me, let's see. We're going to start off, and this is the way I do this. I'm going to start, I'm going to start on this side over here. So I'm going to take this accent color, and I'm going to go ahead and bring it across like this across the top of all the all the work strands in the core right 
and then you take your main working end, which is the same one as the, you know, the core strand, the main color of the bracelet. And all you're going to do is you're going to go in between these first two on this side. Like, like I've said in a lot of videos, a lot of these bracelets, you'll weave, you'll weave on one side, and then you weave on the other side. And you weave back, and it's an ebb and flow, back and forth, back and forth as you work down the bracelet, right? On this one, we're going to start on this side. So we're just going to take this, and we're going to run it down through here. Let me do this. Let me do this. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you, because this, this is a quite a lot of a amount of cord. I got, oop, I got a knot in it. Let me get that out. I, um, you're going to see me struggling, so to speak, with all this excess I got, because that's one big long piece. Right? Now, the, the accent piece is not very long. Let me put a, let me put this on here. It'll make it easier to see on camera what I'm actually doing with this. All right, here, I'll go ahead and put it on these other two also. And I do this, I'll say this, I, I've said this, you know, I put these on here so you, so you as the viewer of the video can see where I'm putting the cord a little easier. Now there are times when I actually weave, it just depends on the bracelet and the way it's done and all that kind of stuff, how long my cord is and all that, to whether I actually do this all the time. But I've gotten into the habit where this is always an option because it makes things a little easier. Instead of having to go down over here, you can take that thing. You see what I'm saying? Now I've just went over, under, over, under. Instead of having to go push it down, pull it all, and back and do it like manually do it all. If you got a fit on there, you can do things a lot quicker. You see, does that make sense? So, you know, that is an option when you're weaving to use these things. But you got to be mindful because they drop and the tips hit the floor and all that kind of stuff. So you just got to be careful with it. But, okay, so, like I said, we're going to do this again. We're going to take our accent piece on this side. And we're going to bring it across. Alright, now we're going to take our main working end. And we'll find the end of this. There's the end of it. Now all I'm going to do in this first slot is I'm going to go down through that first slot. we go down through this first slot. down through the first slot and under and out this direction. Mindful of your twist. See, I got a twist in it right there. Get that out. Okay, then we're going to take this end. And we're going to go over the core strands. Over all four of the core strands, but we're going to go underneath The main working in and this accent color. We say that, does that, that make it? <laughs> and we're going to pull out our slack. Not all of it though. We've got to leave, leave a little bit. Don't pull all this. Leave your loop over here, right here. Now, you've heard me say this in a lot of my videos. Maintain this loop right here because we're going to use that to tighten in a second. We're going to use that to tighten this up. All right? Okay, now. I'm going to go ahead and get out the majority of this. Okay, now, here, we're going to take that accent color. We're going to find the end of it. Like I said, I've got a fit on it. Bam. All right? It just goes down off camera and comes back up. Make sure it's not twisting, wrapped around anything. Okay, now this, right here. This... I'll show you the way Cetus does it in his book. And this is the way I do it. Okay. Let's pull this down a little bit so you can see it. What we're going to do is we're going to go down through this middle slot. And under the next cord over. And then we're going to come out over this last one. Does that make sense? Let me do this and I'll show you. 
Okay. I'm going to show you what I'm doing here. This is not what you're actually going to do. I'm going to just show you what I'm talking about. You can go down through the middle, under this one, and over this last one. You see that? Down through the middle, under this one, and over this one. Right? Now, the video that I'm talking about where the guy does it, he ends up with the same bracelet, but he does it differently. He goes under both of these. And I, I venture to say it's because the picture in the see this book, it's, it's hard to tell if this is an over or an under. And if you don't look, I know when I first did it, I, I made that mistake of going under right there. And I started, I'm like, well, this doesn't look exactly the same. Something's off. I'm attention to de very detail on it. And I'm like, something's not right. And I realized, ah, the picture's hard to see. And this right here is supposed to be over. Right? So that other video, the guy does that. And I doesn't, it doesn't change. I mean, the bracelet still looks the same to, you know, you look at it, uh, but me, I noticed those little tiny details, and I was like, yeah, something's not quite, yeah, right? But anyway, with all that, we well, see how I did that. We go down through the middle, under the, the one, and then over that one. But we're going to do it up here in this loop, right? So I'll show you. What I just did here, I'm going to do up here, but I'm going to run it through this loop over here. So... Below these two, this blue and this gray, I'm going to go through that middle. Down through that middle slot, under that cord, and out. And I'm going to come out, see, over this loop. So I'm going over this cord strand. Let me, let me say this again. Down through the middle slot, under this first cord strand you come to, underneath it. And then you're going over the top of that next core strand, that outer core strand, and over the top of this loop. So basically you're, you're threading this gray and you're getting it through this loop right here. Alright. Like I said, that's the mistake. The, that, that, this gray going over this outer core strand, either over or under it, the book is over. You'll see the other video on YouTube, and he goes under it. And like I said, book, the way Cedis does it is like this. But now, we're just going to tighten all this up. And all I do is, you know, I keep this over here. I just kind of push it up, and I'm going to pull this gray one. I'm going to get that twist out, because there's a twist in it right there, I see. I'm going to get that twist out. There we go. Push it up, and I'm going to just pull this. I'm going to take my thumb on this gray and roll my thumb back, and it's going to push that slack down as I'm pulling this direction. Pushing it up. And we all know, like I've always said, the very first couple of weaves aren't going to look the way the meat of the bracelet will. It'll eventually fall into place and everything will look right. I'm going to pull that now. All we're going to do is reach back here on the back and grab this side of the loop, and we're going to tighten that up and I'll keep my hand up while I'm pushing up toward the buckle I'll keep my hand up there as I do this and pull that right here pulling it down and kind of switch hands and grab this and pull it and make sure there's not a twist in this as you do it and just pull it and that's it now we're going to do basically the same thing, but we're going to do it on the other side. This one, we're not going to use this repetition. Get it out of the way. So, again, we're going to take this cord, and we're going to <coughs> take this accent color. We're going to come across the four core strands, and this obviously it's going under the blue. We see that. right? Just kind of bring it over here and kind of get it out of the way. Now we're going to take the main working end. Let me find the end of the cord. There's quite a lot of it. And we're going to go down to the very last slot on this side. 
See that? Pull a slack through. Mindful of your twist. Now we're going to take the, uh, we're going to keep going. Now we're going to come through like we did before. We're going to go over the top of all the full, the full core strands, but underneath this, this little loop of the accent and the main working thing. We see that? And we're going to pull it through. Get the twist out. I'm, I'm rotating with this hand to get that twist out. We see that? Now, what we're going to do here, just like we did before, we're going to take this gray one, the accent color, find the end of it, which is nowhere near as long as that blue one, and we're going to go, like I said, down through the middle slot, and on this one we're going to come back this direction. We're going to go down through the middle slot, under that, that cord, and then over the outer one. Just like we did on the other side, except we're going this direction. But we're going to do it so it goes through this blue loop up here. Below this blue and gray, so we're going to go down through the middle slot, underneath that strand right there, over this outer one, and through this little loop this formed right here. And we just pull a slide through. Right now, that's all. That's all that. Now we just tighten it up. Like I said, the way I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna kind of pull this accent. This is the way I've been doing this, pulling that accent, leaving this loop over here, because I'm gonna grab the back of it and tighten up the blue. But grab the accent piece and push it up and roll the thumb across this gray piece at the top rolling that slack down through there as I'm pulling out this direction right. now we're going to reach back here and grab this side of the loop and it's going to tighten up that little blue piece right there I just see the way pushing it up toward the buckle and kind of keeping it pushed up as I do this that way it gets tight right there and kind of holding that, that piece of blue that we just tightened up right here, kind of, that's what my thumb is, is maintaining that. And then I pull this, just pull it straight out, make sure there's no twist in it over here on this side. Alright, and that's it. That's all there is to this one. We're going to do it again. We're going to Get the blue up out of the way. Get your main working in. The very, very long one. The one that's the same as the core strands. Get it up out of the way. And grab that accent piece on this side. Because now we're ebb and flow. Ebb and flow. We're on this side now. So we're going to get this out of the way. Grab this and bring it across. Now as you do this, like I say in any of these. I mean, I'm just showing you the overs and unders and how I do it. Once you do it and you kind of get it down. Your, your rhythm of it might be slightly different. You might... Hey, I'd rather pull it tight here and do it this way. Hey, to each his own. Everybody's got it different and wants, can do it different. This is just the way I do this. Okay, now. We'll take that. End of that working, end of that blue. And go down through that first slot. Down through that first slot, not this direction. Just pull your slot. Or your excess. And then, like I said, we're going to go over the top of the four core strands, but underneath our main working end and our accent color. We we'll say that. I'm going to just pull it through. Okay, now. That's what you should have. Now. We take that accent color that 
and the fine end of it. And then this is the tricky part. This is the part where I've seen the, the variation on this. We're going to go down through that middle slot, under the next strand, go in this direction, underneath that next core strand, and then over the outer core strand. But we're going to incorporate it into this loop of our main working end. So, like I said, below this direction, below these two that you got already right here, Go down through that course, down through that middle slot, underneath that first working or first core string you'd come to. Go underneath it and over that outer one. Over, see, under that first strand, over the outer strand, work core strand. And then over the top of this, that way we're getting our accent color through this little blue loop. We pull our slap through. And that's it. That's the overs and the unders. Now we're to the point of tightening it up. Like I said, I've been pushing it up with my fingers and kind of pulling this. Making sure it doesn't have a twist in it right there. Which that's got a little bit of a twist, so I'm going to... I'm going to back it out just a little bit, and I'm going to get that twist out of there. And all I'm doing is, when I'm pulling, hopefully I'm pulling it. Yeah, I am. When I'm pulling this, I'm rotating it as I pull it, and it'll get the twist out up here. Yeah, that's it. That's what I want. All right. Now, this little, here, I'll show you. Let me, let me pull all this so you can see it. This piece right here where the, the work main working in starts and comes down that's what we've got to get out of there so we're going to grab it back here All right. so as we're pushing it up toward the buckle we're going to pull this one again and make sure it's tight I'm, I'm holding I'm holding it with my fingers I'm doing three things I'm holding it I'm pushing it up and I'm holding it this way pulling it this way to counteract me pulling does that make sense that's what I'm doing I know you can't see that on camera but that's what I'm doing like I said I'm not only going to tell you over here under there pull tight but I'm going to tell you which direction and how tight to pull it that's what the, that's why I give all these little details grab a hold of it pushing it up and pulling it this way as I tighten this and it tightens that gray piece up now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to reach back here, grab this one, and just going to tighten that little piece of blue up right there as I'm pushing it up. And I'm going to switch hands, and I'm going to keep my thumb right there so it maintains that tightness in that little blue piece, and I'm going to just pull the slack out of this, or the excess out of this, slack, excess, whatever. But as I do it, watch it and make sure there's no twist in it, because if there is, you counteract that twist as you... By rotating the core on this side, whichever direction it needs to be, you'll get used to which way it needs to be turned. See how it cocked, it, it cocked up at an angle because I twisted it the wrong way. I pull it back out. See, see how it's straight? That's what you want it to look like. See how it cocks up? It's because you're twisting it. It'll be you're twisting it wrong. You see how it, you see how it's moving as I'm twisting my hand. That's what I'm talking about. You get it straight so it looks like this, and then you just pull it tight. And that's it. That's all there is to it. We'll do it one more time on this side. We're gonna get the blue up out of the way, grab the accent color, and just bring it across. We'll find the end of this. Down to the first slot on this side. If I get it to go through there and pull it through this way. And now we're going to go underneath these two, this little loop opening this formed here. We're going to go underneath these two, 
and over the top of these four core strands. Set that twist? I get that out. Now we're going to grab our accent color right here. And again, we're going to do all this through this little loop right here. We're going to go below these two, down here, through the middle, under that first core strand, and over this outer core strand. Go down through the middle slot, underneath that first core strand, over the top of that, all the while going through that loop. Now that we got it right there, I'm going to push up, pull, kind of roll it with your thumb, get that excess out, reach back here and grab the back side of it, push it up, pull there, switch hands. And pull that, pull that tight. We get that. Now you start to see the pattern forming. Like I said, these first two they're going to be overly long compared to the rest of them. The rest of them are going to be little short pieces like this, where you see this gray. This is basically going to have these two little gray pieces, and it's going to form. It's going to form a line of gray down the either offset center of the bracelet. Does that make sense now? I'm going to just do this like I always do in my videos. Like I tell you, I'm going to back out so you can see. Like I tell people, I'll watch somebody. If there's a... Some of these bracelets I do simply from a pictorial. And I have to figure all this out. How do I pull it? Where do I hold it and tighten it up and all that? But if they if there's a tutorial on YouTube, a video tutorial, I'll watch them. And I'll see. And I'll watch the people's hands. To see where they grab it, how they tighten it, what they do, how, what technique they're using. Because I may pick up something I don't, I don't, I've never done, or i never seen, or whatever. See what I'm saying? So when you go to make one of these things for the first time, watch, watch a couple of the videos and look at what they're doing. I know me, when I first started doing this, I would jump straight in. I'd, I'd watch the video and he'd say, yeah, cut. This many feet of cord and this and that and blah, and I'd do it, and then I'd set up, and I hadn't even watched the rest of the video. Not realizing at the end of the video, he said, Ah, I was too short of cord. Bingo. Or whatever. But I'll sit and watch the video first, I'll watch the different videos, and then I'll come back and try to make it. Does that make sense? So by the time I actually get to the point of making the bracelet, I pretty much already know the over here and under there. I got all that. I'm trying to figure out. that. That's the easy part. I know the over and the under. It's where do you tighten it up? How do you tighten it? Where do you hold it? And how do you tighten it to get the thing to tighten up? Because like I always say, neat, clean, and tight. I had a lady the other day. I'm going to say I'm going to brag on myself. But like, I let others... Glorf, give me honor. I'm just repeating what this lady said. I went out in public the other day. I went to the craft store buying beads. And I, I mentioned to that lady, I got to talking to the, one of the sales people there. And I told her, I said, this is my area. Now, I didn't have this bracelet on. I had another one on. I said, this is my area of expertise. This is what I know how to do. I said, but I'm trying to get into doing this and whatever. And she looked at my bracelet I had and she said, she said, Wow, she said, that thing looks great. She said, it's so tight. And I said, what, what do you mean by that? Because I, I wanted her to expand on that just to see if she, if she got it. She said, it's tight. I said, what do you mean? She said, that doesn't look like some kid in high school did that as a, pro, a, high, uh, as a craft project. She said, that looks like a professional craftsman made that. And I looked at her and I said, thank you. I said, thank you that you recognize that. I said, a lot of people, they don't see that. I said, that's that's what I'm going for. I, I told her, I said, this is what I say to people all the time. Neat, clean, and tight. That's what I want. Neat, clean, and tight. Makes sense? But anyway, <laughs> that kind of, I, I appreciate it. I told that lady, I said, thank you, thank you, thank you. Anyway, we'll do this again. Where are we at? We're on.
this side down. <clears throat> so like I said, I'm going to just do this. You watch my hands. Maybe you get something out of it. Maybe not. If you could see, here, let me zoom in and I'll show you this. Now that it's starting to, the bracelet's starting to form, maybe you could see this. I don't know if you could see that or not very well on camera. But this blue wrap around here and the one right above it, there's a gap in between there. It's going to be there. That's where that side, that wrap around stitching I got, do, I, that I, I do on a lot of these bracelets. That's where it goes in that gap. And sometimes these gaps will be, depending on how hard you push this thing up, sometimes that gap is bigger or it's real wide or it's narrow. You see what I'm saying? And hence why I'll use the thicker cord so it's more easily seen, that little piece of cord that wraps through there. Does that make sense? Okay. I'll back back out and I'll, like I said, I'll do this. I'll do this a couple times just let me let you watch. Hold your main core strand up, bring the other one over, find the end of this one, go down, through. The reason I'm holding my thumb over here, many of you have know, seen me, because I'm, I'm, I'm going to maintain this loop because I'm going to use it to tighten up. So I don't want to... I don't want to do it like this because then I'll have to dig that, dig that back out. Just hold, hold it up there. So I got a twist and got to get that out. You see what I'm saying? If I hold my thumb, it maintains this loop, which I'm going to use to tighten up. But if I didn't, I would end up with this and then I'd have to reach back there and fight with it. Now I've got something to grab a hold of. That's, I'm just anticipating what I'm doing. Okay, now this one, we take this one, find the end of it, go through the middle slot, under the first one we come to, and over the outer one, through that loop, and we pull. Getting that twist out. Pushing everything up, pulling that tight. Now I'll say this, this bracelet, once you start doing it, you may notice this, you may not, it just may be the way I weave and whatever. If you come at it, I know it I know it did it when I was using um I made one with some this is all nylon right here. I made one the other day that the dark green one, if anybody saw that, it was all green elements, all the cords were green. The main color of the bracelet is was a polyester, which is a little stiffer. It's not, it's not harder to work with. It's just weaves slightly different. The way it feels and the way it interacts with other cords and everything. You just get used to it, you know. But because it was a little bit stiffer, when I, when I leaned over and I looked kind of downward at the side, I could see little gaps down through there. It's because, see, I can't, I'm looking at it now from this angle right here now over here. See, I don't see them on this one. It's just because that cord was stiffer and it wasn't filling in all these little gaps. Nothing I could do about it. I mean, I pushed it up. I pulled everything as tight as I could and I pushed it up toward the top and that's just the way it was. But this one, as you do it, you're going to notice these two pieces of blue in the middle that, that go like that down through the middle. Make sure as you're weaving this, you know, make sure your sides, like I always say, make sure you've pulled and the sides are the same. You don't have one you didn't pull real tight and it's sticking out. And then the next one you pulled it real tight and it's way down here. You see what I'm saying? Boop, 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 boop. Heart monitor. Maintain. Look at that. But look at these two center pieces. Make sure that these blue pieces are all lined up and equal as you do this. 
That way your finished product will look good. Gray over the core strands. Take your working in down through this last slot underneath this to maintain this loop right here. Just pull the slide out, pull the excess through. Find the end of this one. Down through the middle slot, under the first core string you come to, and over that outer one, going through that loop. And you pull. Make sure you ain't got no twist in that cord. Push everything up, and pull that gray pretty tight. And then reach back here on the back side and pull that main working in to get that loop out. Kind of holding tension, pressure on that, switching hands, and just pulling this. Make sure you don't have a twist right there. And that's it. That's all there is to it. But like I say, it's not a hard one. It, you just have to. <coughs> it's got so many steps in the rep in each repetition that that's what takes it. That's what takes you a minute to get do this one. That and then the fact if you're going to come back and stitch it. Oh yeah, I, I guess I should add. Which I, if you watch any of my videos, you'll know. If you know you're going to stitch it, you might not want to pull it as tight. But this one, not so much. This one's not a very hard stitch. A lot of these you go to try to stitch, you're having to dig and find. and It's like you're groping in the darkness trying to get the needle to go through there. This one is not really like that. This one it's pretty simple. It goes through there pretty easy. Once you figure out where you're going through and how to get it through there, it goes right through there. You're not having to fight any very much. So <laughs> when you pull this all this real tight, you don't have to take into consideration as much as other bracelets not tightening it so much because you're going to stitch it. Like I said, if you know you're going to stitch it, don't tighten it so much. That way you don't fight trying to get your stitching needle through there. This one, it doesn't come into play as much. It does, but not as much as some of the other bracelets I've done. And this is just one of the things, the more you do this, the better you'll be able to gauge these things or whatever. And you'll... You know, it's like anything. The more you do it, the more accustomed to it you become. You know, you get better at gauging this part. One more time. I'll, I'll say this too. Here, here's something right here. Where this work again is coming out of the center and going down through that first slot right there. Make sure it doesn't have a twist in it. I, I noticed for me, these pieces of blue in the middle, they'll get a little twist in them. And I notice it. I notice it. I was showing my wife. She come out here the other day and she was watching me. And I said, you see that? How it's twisted a little bit? She said, yeah, kind of. I said, that stands out like a sore thumb to me. I said, i got to fix that. She said, really? I said, yeah, I noticed that. She said, well, I guess if if you do this all the time... You, you would notice that. She said, that, I said, you're right. The average person who doesn't make these bracelets wouldn't notice it. I said, I do because I make them all the time. I said, I don't like that. It just looks like a twist. Or it is a twist. And I said, it's very subtle. And since it's such a short a bit of piece there, you don't notice it so much. But if you look, it's twisted. But that's me, though. So that's what I'm doing right there. I'm getting that piece out straight. Okay, we push it up. Pull it great. 
pull that below and pull that below But that's it, folks. That's all there is to it. I um, let me weave this out to the end. It'll, it'll take me a little while, just because, like I said, you got so many overs and unders. <clears throat> but I'll come back and I'll show you how I finish this one off, and uh, I'll see how you start the stitch. And what the way I'll do it, I'll do the center stitching first because that's going to take that's going to take the time. That center stitching, and I say it takes time. Yeah, just because there's, you know, so much of it, but it's like a three or four step, let's see. Yeah, it's about a three or four step stitch. You know, you can't just, you'll see when I get there. So just, yeah, stick around, and like I said, I'll weave it out, I'll come back, and we'll get one of these old Nabogana, Nabonaga, I guess is how you say it. We'll get one of these made before the day is out. But stick around, folks. All right, folks, I'm back. I got it. We've got to the end. Um, I'll say this. This one right here, I've noticed this about this weave, just the nature of the way this thing is. You weave it down to the end, and you're going to have... You, let's see. I'll explain this. On these weaves, you, you try to get them... All the way as close as you can to where these hitches are so you don't see your core strands on either side and sometimes in trying to get in that last little repetition things get real tight well the way this one is what ends up happening is just the nature of the way this knot is you can get it down to the end but you'll have this gap right here in the middle just the nature of the way this thing is and you'll you'll see a gap in there and I try my best to do this so you don't see that little hole right there in the middle where you can see through the bracelet and what I do this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna kinda do like a half knot I guess I uh, I've done this side this side right here is a complete knot the same thing you've done the whole way down and this one I'm gonna do I'm gonna do it slightly different I went ahead I've got this gray piece already coming around and going down through the center like you normally would. And that's all I'm going to do. That's going to get it on the back side. I've got the two grays on the back side and I've got this little bit of blue and you see how much I've got left. Um, I'm going to try my best to get this. On, like I say, I'm going to do it. Let's see. I'm going to stick it through like like normal, like you would always, you know, like we've done so far. Hopefully I don't jam it through anything, because it's kind of hard to see at this angle for me. And it is tight right here, okay. Yeah. Okay, we're going to pull that through. And I'm going to bring it back around like I normally would and go through, if I get enough room right there and then I'm gonna just take it and I'm gonna run it down the center that way it'll get it on the back side and it'll fill in hopefully it'll fill in that little gap that I'm talking about once you do this you'll see what I'm talking about when you get down there you'll see this little gap and so let's see first off let's tighten up this gray piece I'm gonna just pull it like this and I'm gonna this little loop, like always, I'm going to use it to tighten up that little blue piece best I can. <clears throat> I could probably take this off the jig. I might be able to do it a little bit easier. I'll I'm, I'm, I'm make sure it's all tight and straight before I finish it. Now, if i got enough room, yeah, I can make this work. This piece of blue is just a little short. And I even cut it. Like I say, when I write this down, I, I keep recipe cards. I write down the measurements and every all the information I need, I write it down. That's, I, that's just a tip. I, I know I say this in a lot of videos, I'll say it again. When you, first time you go to do one of these weaves, this is what I do. I'll either look at the pictorial where they give you the measurements of cord and the add to, or um, 
I'll watch the video, and then they'll, they'll give you the measurement of the cord. They don't often give you that add to measurement. You kind of got to figure that out. But when they give measurements, I don't care if it's from the, a book or a tutorial or whatever, I will automatically add at least three feet to each of the cords. If they say 10 feet, I cut me 13 feet. That way I know I have enough to finish the bracelet. Hopefully. There are, there are times where it, it doesn't work. But I'll write down what I cut. I'll do the weave and when I get done, I will go back and look how much I have left and I'll adjust the numbers on my card. But I also write down what size wrist I'm making it for. Most often for my wrist, which is a seven inch wrist. That way I can look at it and go, okay, for a seven inch wrist, this is how much cord I used. So if I'm making it bigger or smaller, I can adjust the length of the cord. Does that make sense? Always write this stuff down for future reference. Because I know I've seen people, they'll make it, oh man, I got the wrong size. And then I'll go to remake it and they say, well, I got it wrong again. Or not the wrong size, but the wrong amount of cord. And I'm like, just write it down. That's all you have to do is write it down. And when you get done, adjust the numbers to more accurately reflect the amount of cord you needed. That way when you go back to redo it, you just re refer to your recipe card and bam, no problem. But like I said, this one I've written down for a 7 inch wrist and this is for a 7 and 3 quarter inch wrist. And I even added a little bit to the measurement on here and you see, uh, I'm cutting a little slot shy there. But we're going to get this down through here. I'm going to have to come back with my pliers and get that tight. But I'm going to stick this down through that center. Like that. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take this off the jig. Like I said, you see how this was not as tight as I normally would, but watch the difference when I pop this loose. You see, it's, it's, they're touching each other. That brass piece and that black piece are touching each other. Now, you see how much of a gap is in between there? It's because I pulled that thing tight. Neat, clean, and tight. Okay, get the jig out of the way. We're done with that part. Okay. Now, I'm going to come back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back weave all my cords into it. Let's see if I can't get this thing to look. Yeah. See, there's still going to be that little gap right there. Okay, now, I'm going to tighten this up. If you look, let's see if you can see this, what I'm talking about. This blue piece is running at this angle like this. You see how it's sticking up? I'm going to tighten it up, and it's going to pull it down a little bit. My handy dandy round nose pliers. That's what these are. These are for jewel, you know, making jewelry. But I use these more so than a knotter's tool, marlin spike, or whatever. But I'm gonna grab a hold of it back here. I'm gonna get a hold of this, and it's gonna pull that blue piece down. If I can get up under the cord good, I'll grab a hold of it and I'm going to just kind of roll it. I roll it and it'll pull, it'll pull it through. Yeah, see, I can already tell it's done it. All right. Now we're going to take and pull this blue cord and it's going to tighten up. See, I, I, if we look at it, See, now that blue piece is not sticking up. All that that little bit of slack, now it's over here on this wraparound piece. See how it's sticking out? We've got to get rid of that. So we're just going to pull this and it's going to pull that through. See? All right. And you notice, for the most part, now it's not perfect. I don't claim to be perfect, but for the most part, all of them are even down through there. And like I've said before, you take that, when you got that bracelet on the jig, if you hold it up at this angle and you look at it, you can look down the side and see. 
Like you can look at this, and you can see this side right here, the gray. It looks pretty good. It's, it's pretty straight over here. Yeah, something something went off right there. See how it looks kind of. But a lot of times you can fix that. You can come back with your finger and kind of line it up. See, kind of fixes it a little bit. But you know, most people don't look at the bracelet this way. All they're looking at is that. But now that we got that done, let's see, can you see that gap? You can kind of see it. If I take these cords and I pull them all up out of the way, you can see there's a little hole right there. That's what I'm talking about. Right here, right above the buckle, where in between these two hitches is where the bracelet stops, right there. And on this one, it's kind of hard to get that to fill in right. So, some of them are like that. Okay, now what I'm going to do, and you can see, this is the accent piece. i got quite a lot, almost two feet on each side. So that's a little much. So, you know, um, and like I said, I added to the measurements that are going to be in the description below are for a seven inch wrist. Right? And I've added to that a little bit because this is not seven inches. This is more than a seven inch wrist. So I just wanted to make sure. But the measurements that are going to be in the <clears throat> description will be for a seven inch wrist. And they, they're, they're pretty, they're pretty up spot on. But like I said, I always, I would rather have this, you know, amount of scrap in the end and be able to finish the bracelet than to get down here and be all iffy and not know if I'm going to be able to finish it. That's one of the most frustrating things. You end up doing a perfect bracelet and you get down and you realize, man, I don't have enough cord to finish it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to back weave these up into the back side. Let's see, how are we going to do this? What I'll do is I'm going to run them, all three of them, up under this one gray piece right here on this side. Hopefully it's not going to be so tight that I can't get them under there. And I try, I try to do this. Make sure there's no twist in this thing. See how? Here, let's zo let me zoom in. Maybe that'll help a little bit. But you see how there's a gray loop right here? It's not, it's not all crazy twisted or anything. It's, it comes up, it goes down, and goes back through. That's how I know, know there's not a twist. But just pull it through. Okay, but what I what I was going to say was what I try to do on these bracelets of where all the cords are coming through on the back. I look at them because they they're going to be orientated most often. You're going to have one that's closer to this side, one, and and they they'll kind of you see. Does that make sense? You'll have one on this side, one on this side, and one kind of in the middle. Now you may have whatever bracelet that you're doing. You might have four of them, and but. Most often, they're going to be lined up kind of this way. Well, when I run them up under wherever I'm running, I try to keep them in that same orientation so that they don't, they're not crossing over making this lump because this is already going to be a big lump when you run these three cords through there. It, 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 if you keep them in the same orientation as you run them through there, it keeps them from crossing over each other and making this lump even bigger than it's going to be already, if that makes any sense. Yeah, that one's, that's a little tight. Pull it through. Make sure you don't have a twist in this cord as you pull it through. All right, now this one, oh yeah, I'll be able to get it through there just barely, but I'll get it through there. Now that we 
we got them all through there. What I'll do if you're if you're going to stitch it, this is what you do. If you're not going to stitch it, make sure everything's good to go on the front. Pull everything tight. Get all your slack out. Make sure everything's lined up the way you want it, and then just do your cut and burn. But since we're going to stitch this, what I'll do. I'll come back about an inch and a half, two inches, something like that. And cut them. And then I'll just melt the ends of them. Just enough so they don't get all frayed. And well, the reason I'm doing it this way is because when you go to stitch this thing, if you've already done your final cut and burn with these, you'll have a big hard lump of plastic. Sometimes that lump of plastic is in the way and you can't get your stitching needle through it. So you do this, that way you, you do your stitching and you do your final cut and burn at the end. Does that make sense? After you've done all the stitching, then you come back and you cut these little tiny pieces off and you cut and burn them there. Makes sense? Now, too short for the scrap bucket so that goes in the trash bucket now these I can save I always do this force of habit get it wait just a second not a lot of pressure just run your fingers down it all you're doing is kind of shaping the end of it so there's no burrs or anything on it and normally the way I do that, it'll go on that, that fed will screw right onto it. But there's that, that'll be for the scrap bucket. We're going to do this one the same way. Get it, get it hot and melty. Give it a second. Reach up here and just run your fingers down it. I'll put these in the scrap bucket, which I have right here. Okay, now, like I said, this one right here, like I said in the beginning, the reason I left it so long is so I would have enough slack to back weave it into the back side of this bracelet. And what I'm going to do on this one, I'll show you this. The way I do this knot on the core strand setup the way I do this little top knot on most of my bracelets you end up having this cord that sticks out toward the side and most often that will be one of your working ends a lot of bracelets they, they, they'll come out at the, the, the sides and they both are working ends that get woven into the bracelet well the way this one was we ran it back through and it come through the middle You can see where that blue piece is coming out in between. This blue piece right here is coming out in between these two middle pieces above the hitch. That's where the other one was. And I did this knot on the, up here on this side opposite so that cord would be coming out that way. And I just ran it through. Now on this one, I do it the normal way that I always do. And it hence this hangs out here. Now, you could do this. You could just take this cord and wrap it like this and then back weave it into the bracelet but what you end up having is you have this little you can't really see it you kind of can you see right there you just have this little lump that sticks out or what you can do now that you've got the bracelet woven and it's not going to come undone you can take sorry you can take this piece and run it back through here and all you do is you pull it through And now, you don't see that potential lump sticking out on that side. Does that make sense? Neat. That's part of being neat. <laughs> and now you just take it and you back weave it into one of these gray pieces. This is the way I've been doing it. And I'll try to do it on this first one. Just get it up under there. Make sure there's no twist in it as you do it. Flatten it back out a little bit. And you do the same thing. About an inch and a half or so. 
again, not big enough for the scrap bucket, so it goes in the trash. And we do the same thing with this. The reason I'm not shaping the end of this is because these are going to get cut off and thrown in the trash also. I'm just doing that so it doesn't get frayed. Let it dry. Okay, now, to do the stitching, I don't have one of these on hand. I haven't made me one of these. I made, I made one and my wife's got it in the house and the other one I made I just shipped off to a customer so don't have one to use as a visual aid but what we're going to do is <coughs> basically let's see see if I can explain this to you we're going to we're going to obviously we're going to anchor our cord and as always I'm going to anchor it in the same place that this is I'm going to run it up through here Okay, now we're going. What this is going to end up being is it's going to have three stitches, if you will, three runs. One is going to be this smoke gray, which is the same gray as here, and that is what we're going to do down the center, and that's what I'm going to show you right now. Okay, but what we'll do is we'll anchor it right here, and we're going to go through the bracelet up here at the very top, and we're going to come out basically. Where this blue piece, this blue, this first blue piece that's in the center is running at this angle. We're going to come out just below it right here. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Now, like I said, this center stitch, I mentioned it briefly earlier in the video. It's got a couple of steps in it. The way it's done, it's got a couple of steps in it. And I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. If I can explain. I'll, I'll, I'll explain it, then I'll show you. you. It comes out from here, and it follows this groove right here. Okay? And it's going to go back through the bracelet over here. But in order to do it, you have to go up under this gray piece. Now you can try, and I tried it this way, and it was it was hard, and it caused the bracelet. It kind of, if you try to run it up under this gray piece, and then try to angle it down and get it to go through there, it kind of pulls this gray piece up out of there, and it causes it not to look right. So what I was, what I've done, is run it under the gray piece. Pull it through and then run it down through the hole on this side to get it to come out. So it's like that extra step to get it under that gray piece. And I and and, and look at all the gray pieces. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So there's quite a few extra steps in there, and that's what takes this center stitching so long to do. But if you do it that way, it, it's a little easier to do, and it makes for a neater bracelet in the end. Okay. So now let's get everything off the table because we got a quite a long piece and like I said I've cut this piece a little bit longer than the measurements in the description and it's probably going to be a lot more than I need but I'll be able to finish. So like I said let's get all this stuff out of the way so we don't have our cord getting snagged on anything. I've already cut it and I got it set up. Okay, now all I'm going to do is I'm going to run it. Now since this piece is going to go through right here at the top in the middle of the bracelet because it's going to come out where this blue piece is, I'm going to run it on this side of this blue piece through this loop. Like jam it through there we go get it through there like that get it through push it back down to cause some resistance that way when you go to pull all this through you don't pull it all the way through and have to do this little bit again okay let's see we got something going on here get this out Go. 
when I get right here, I just leave it about the same length as that blue piece. Okay, now let's see. Let me let me look at this thing and make sure I'm gonna try to get this through in the right place. Yeah. I'm just going through right up here at the top, right there in the middle, and I'm coming out. You can see where I'm coming out. Hopefully you can see this. Yeah, there we go. Like I said, this blue piece is running at an angle. You're going to come out this side of it or the bottom of it, however you want to label that. But we're going to follow this groove right here. And we're going to do that to every one of these blue pieces. All right? So we're just going to run that through. Make sure to hold this right here so when you pull it, it doesn't pull this gray piece. This this gray piece, it doesn't pull it up. You want to... Right? Okay. Now, I'll show you. We're going to follow right, right in that little groove right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up under this gray piece. And we're going to, that's all we're doing. We're not, so like I said, you can try to go under that gray piece and you have to angle it up. And what that does is it pulls this gray piece up out of place and you don't want that. But you, you can try it, but... You go through, and then you got to go down back through the bracelet over here on this side of the gray piece. So we'll go through this right here. Here, give me a second. Let me make sure I haven't jammed it through in the cord there. Okay, but we see how I got that going through there. I'm going to pull it through. Make sure it's getting that twist out. Being that you got such a long piece of cord on this run of stitching, you, you're going to have to be mindful of the twist. Okay, now we're going to take the end of it. What we're going to do... is we're going to run it through. It's kind of hard to see. Hopefully I can explain this and it'll make sense. Get this up out of the way so you can see. What we're going to do is where this blue wraparound piece goes up inside there, we're going to go down below it. Above this gray piece and below this blue piece, right through there and it's going to come out it's going to come out below this gray piece right over here in this area so if you notice you got four core strands one this blue is wrapping around the next core strand this one is wrapping around we're going to come we're going to go in between them two core strands is what we're going to do okay now let me see if I can get this to do right say that now when we pull it through and you go to tighten it up it's going to suck that gray piece you're not going to see oh sorry this piece of gray micro cord where it's coming out on this side of the 550 gray once you get running this all the way through and you pull it it's going to pull it down in there and you're not going to see it on this side of the gray piece which is what we we don't want so let's we're going to Push it through there. I'll pull all this through. Making sure see it's all twisted up. We're gonna get all them twists out. Now when I pull this, it's this gray that's on down here below this thick gray piece, the 550 gray piece, it's gonna disappear once you pull it down in there. You're not gonna see it. 
Okay. Hey, you don't you don't see it down here anymore. But you still see it up here. Right? Okay, now on this one, what we're gonna do over here, it's kinda hard to see. If you look, when you make this bracelet, I'll show you this. When you make this bracelet, you're gonna have this little trench right here in the middle. If you take it and you kinda open it up a little bit what you'll see down through here are the blue pieces that are crossing so I know you probably can't see it in this video very well but you can look down in there and you'll, you'll see them blue pieces of cord like this like a zipper you're gonna be going in between those blue pieces down through there you can't see it up here because it's so tight but I'll show you now what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna follow. Sorry, I'm all out of frame. We're gonna follow this gray piece right below it, right here. All we're doing is crossing that core strand, and we're gonna go right back down through the middle, in between the two core strands on this side and the two core strands on this side. We're gonna go right down through the middle, right here. Right, and we're gonna come out. Here, let me do this because this these first couple ones because everything's not in you know the top of the bracelet and the bottom of the bracelet are never quite the same as the meat I've said that so let me do this and you'll see what I'm talking about because it's kind of hard to see I'm just kind of having to grope in the darkness to find where I want it to go through at but once I do you see how I got it through there And it went through. See, we before we were working with this angled blue piece. Now we're working with the next one down, which is on the other side and is angled the other way. And we're going to keep it right below in this groove. But when you come through, you see how I got the needle is below or on this side, however you want to label it. Of the blue piece and that piece of micro cord we've already got. You don't want your cord to come up in between that blue piece and that piece of micro cord. You want it to be on this side. Right? So we pull it through. Now if you look on the back, you'll see what I'm talking about. Get this out of the way. You'll see this gray piece, this is a loop of gray right here. See how it just seats in between. It seats below this gray piece. Right? And that's all we're going to do. We're going to keep doing this pattern. And every one of these little gaps in here is going to get filled in with a piece of this micro cord as we go down. And we're alternating the sides. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But you see where it comes out at. You see how it's going to run down through here. Down through that. Down through that groove. And we're going to run it back up under this gray piece on this side. And then we're going to go through the bracelet to the back. And that's all it is. That's, that's all, basically all this is. It's not really hard. The hardest part. It's getting it up under this piece of, sorry, getting it up under this piece of gray and not jamming it through one of these pieces of blue cord. Cause just so you know, this piece of blue running here is not, it's the same cord, but it's not an immediate here to this blue. You see what I'm saying? That's two pieces of blue that are crossing over up under that piece of gray. So when you go up under this piece of gray, you kind of got to be careful that you don't jam it through either one of these blue pieces we see that we just run it through uh oh I done run it un I ran it under the wrong one I should have ran it under this one and not that one so we can fix that Got to run it back through. It happens. 
Okay, let's try this again. And I, I found this, I'll say this too, I found that when you're trying to run into those gray pieces, and trying to, instead of trying to keep it perfectly straight along what appears to be the same groove here and down here, kind of run it through like this. If that makes any sense. Get it. Instead of trying to run it through at this angle, tilt it just a little bit. See what I'm saying? And it goes through. Because once you pull it tight, it's gonna f it's gonna cause this piece of micro cord to seat down in place where we want it. So we pull it all through. Right? I see. Now, <laughs> when you go back to stitch it. Or to run this piece through the bracelet right here following this uh, below this piece of blue wrap around and above this gray piece down here so right in this area and now this is not in your way but once you get it through there and you pull it it's gonna pull it over where it's supposed to be down in there and you're not gonna see it just like we did over here okay so we're gonna run it through and we're gonna come out in this area right over here See, it goes right through there. If you know where you're going, this one's not a hard stitch. It just takes a little while because you got to get it up under that gray piece. When I first was working on trying to do this stitching pattern, I was trying to, instead of running it under the gray and then down through it, I was trying to run it under the gray and angle it up and get it down. Th yeah, and it wasn't working very well. It was pulling the gray out of place and it, it was kind of hard to get it. I was like, you know what? Let's just add this extra step. It may take a little extra time. now, But if it'll make it look better in the end. And it's, it's a little easier. More time consuming, but easier to do. Now watch. You see how when I pull this down through here, it disappears down in there and you don't see it. And you just take your finger and kind of mash that gray piece back down into place. And you don't see that gray over here on this side. Now, on the back side, okay, over here, again, we're going to follow below this gray piece. Now, don't let these two pieces right here confuse you. I'll get them up out of the way. But we're just going to run across this core strand and go right through the middle. But I'm going to do it so that the piece of micro cord goes up under these two pieces. I'm not going to do it like this. Right? Because eventually I'm going to cut and burn this and I want this back behind there so it's underneath that cut and burn. Does that make sense? So I'm going to go ahead and get it there. And like I say, you can't quite see it because it's all tied up here. But if you put it down through here and you know where you want to come out at below when I say below, I'm talking about over here on this side. Below this blue piece and below this tiny piece of gray micro cord. Right here in this area. Where we want to come out. Yeah, I felt like it, I think. See? See where it's coming out at? Like I said, you don't want it to come out on this side, in between that piece of blue and that gray. Because when you go to tighten it up, it's going to pull the gray piece that's right there already, it's going to pull it out of place. So you want to go on this side of it. Does that make sense? I'm going to just pull it through. Now that i got all that through there, I'm going to reach back here, I'm going to pull this. And it's going to tighten that gray piece up that we just did. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're going to pull this through. Okay, now we, we get down here close to the end. 
we're going to make sure it's going to go up under the anchor pieces of the blue and the gray. See what I'm saying? Got like that. So we're going to flip it over and just give it a little tug. It's going to tighten up everything. Okay. That's it. That's all there is to this one. It's not that hard. It just takes a little bit of time. Once you do it a few times, just like anything else, once you do it a few times, you'll figure out exactly where you want it to get where it needs to go. So we're going to, again, we're going to go into the other side now. We're going to follow the bottom. This little trench right here and go up under this gray piece. And like I said, instead of trying to angle it straight down like this, angle it kind of like this to get it up under that gray piece. It, it goes through a little bit easier. You see that? Now we pull it through. And again, we see how it's it's coming through up here, but we're going to run our needle through right there in that hole. Where well, there's two grays and that blue meet right in that area. Okay, so let me get my needle right in. see now like I said this outer core strand that the blues are wrapped around and this next core strand that the grays are wrapped around you're coming in between those two just below the next gray piece down all right pull a slide through and when we get down here so how you can see the gray, if you just pull it, it disappears down in there and you don't see it. You don't pull that quite tight, quite tight yet, because you want to have a, you want to be able to get up through there. Now, again, we're going to just we're coming up this core strand that's running, but where these grays are wrapped around. You're coming up on this side of it. You just want to cross over in the middle and go through right in here. See that? Below the blue piece and below the piece of micro cord we just did. Pull it through. Keeping these two pieces out of the way. Once you get down a little bit, these two pieces won't be in the way anymore. We got it wrapped around. We got it here. Now this is where I would tighten it up. And what it'll do, it'll tighten up this piece of gray that's running right here. And it wraps around that core piece, core strain in the back. Right here. We just, right there. And that's it. And now we're going to run this one. Like that. Up under this next gray piece. Right here again not going at the angle that you think you would the way you look at it and you go yeah I'm going to go at this angle now you kind of kind of come at, at it just goes through there just a little bit easier pulling it through Like I said, kind of keeping it toward the top. Because that way, the, this cord coming out here is not in your way of when you're trying to run back down through right here. 
again, the same thing. We're going to run it through right here. And it comes out below the next gray piece on this side in between them two core strands we'll pull it through you know you can see it and then when you pull it it disappears down in there and kind of mash that gray piece back into place from right here get these two out of the way these two anchor cords strands out of your way go from this side of the core strand over to this side through the middle is that it? yep that's it remember the blue piece, the gray piece, then the needle Pull it through. Now this is where you would tighten it all, tighten up the last little run. And make sure, again, make sure these two anchor pieces are out of the way. You don't want it, you see how it's wrapping around that anchor, but you don't want it that way. You want that blue and that gray piece up out of the way. And pull it through. Once you get it to that point right there, that's when you tighten it up. And it pulls this tight, the gray piece we did right here, and around that core strand. And now we do it again. We just follow it down the next groove. Up under the gray piece. All there is to it. Once you pull it through, uh -oh. you'll see that piece. It'll just right there. It disappears down in there. Right, go flatten that little piece out. You come around. To the center, crossing over the core strand, back to in between the middle, run it up. Now keeping these out of the way. Now this is where you tighten it up and it tightens up this piece right that gray piece right out of that angle. And that's it. That's all there is to that center stitch. Like I said, it's not a hard stitch. It's not hard getting the needle to go through. Once you do it a time or two, you, you know where you want it to go through and you know where you want it to come out. Just kind of look at it and you'll get it to go through there and you'll, you'll feel it go through and whatever. It's, it's like I said, it's not hard to get it to go through there. The only thing that, it's not hard, it just, because of having to run it under the gray and then through the bracelet. 
It's that extra step that causes it to take a little bit of time. But if you do it that way, I guarantee you, it's going to look better than if you try to go halfway up under that gray and then angle your needle up and jam it through. What's going to happen is it's going to, it's going to pull this gray piece out of place. And as you do it, it's going to, it's going to do it every, it's going to do every one of them. It's going to pull them all out of place and the thing's not, your bracelet won't look right. Right? So just take your time and do it. And it, and plus it's easier to get it to go through if you go under the gray piece and then through the bracelet as opposed to trying to combine those two steps but that's it I'm gonna run this out to the end and uh, I'll come back and I'll show you how I do that and I'll show you how I do the side stitching excuse me this side stitching if you have watched any of my videos on this it's the same thing it's not that hard to do it doesn't take very long it's not very hard it's, it's, it's pretty quick. Take you, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes to stitch down one side. Now this right here is probably going to take me, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes to stitch down this. Maybe even longer. It just depends. Sometimes you get there and the needle doesn't want to quite go through right and whatever. So just be patient. Take your time with it. Um, but you can do it. It's not, like I say, it's not that hard. <coughs> you just take some time. So be patient, be patient, be patient, and you'll get it, and it'll look good, I'm telling you. But with that, I'm going to stitch this out, I'll come back, and I'll show you how to finish it off, and we'll, we'll, I'll show you how to do one of the side stitches. Okay, folks, I'm back, and I got it stitched out to the end, and I, I impress myself sometimes. This thing looks good. The only thing I got to do is one last... Here, let me bring this light over here. Maybe this will help. Let's see. One last piece right here on this piece of blue right there. Well, no, I got a couple. that would be okay. We'll, we'll get it. But what I'm going to do, I know when you get down here to the end and you're trying to do all these little wraparounds and you get down here with all this is, you just got to work around it. Just stick with the same pattern. Just work around this stuff. And what I'm going to do here, this is probably not going to be the easiest thing, but I'm going to run it. So normally I would just go the core strand. This right here. I'd come up, go around it, and go back through. But all this stuff's in my way. So what I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to attempt to do. I'm going to try to run it up under these three cords these three cords that are right here right but I'm gonna run it up under them down here and then hopefully try to stick it through on this side and get it to go through where I want it now I may struggle with this but we'll get it done See how I did that? It's my plan anyway. Now, I'm not saying this is going to work perfectly, but this is my plan. I'm going to pull that through there. I'm going to try to do this. Because the pace I'm trying to follow is actually this gray pace. So it would be like the way I've done them up here, you got the gray piece, and then this micro cord is just below it going through. Well, this is the gray piece, but instead of going across this top, I went up under everything. And now I'm going to just kind of grope right through here until I get it to where I want it. They pull this light down here so maybe I can see, and I'm going to take it and try to, yeah, I can see where I need to put it through, right there. Yeah. You can see the tip of it coming through right there where I want it. Like I said, down here at the end it gets everything's kinda tight and you know you got you got this in the way, so you just gotta be a little a little patient with it sometimes. I 
especially at the very end because the way I've done this last knot is not the same as the rest of them. So, you know, you just got to be mindful of that when you get down to the end and just be be mindful of what you're doing. And you can get it and it'll work. See, that's tight right there, I'm telling you. That's, that's, that's tight. Oh, it went through there. Right where I wanted it to now. We're just going to run it through. Get the light out of the way. Get that twist out of it. Again, I'm following this piece this time, and all this stuff's kind of in the way. But if you, by the time you've done this many of them, you kind of know where you need to put it, even though you can't quite see it. You know where it needs to go, so you just kind of. I think this is going to be the last one. If you look at it, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this. I can do this one, but if I try to run it down here on this one, what I, what's going to happen is because there's nothing there when you go pull it tight, it's just going to slide down in and you won't see it, it won't look right. So I'm not going to do that very last one right there. But I am going to run this through here. Get up here in the light so I can see where I'm going through at. Yep. Kind of that same area. Just in between this outer core strand. And the one, the core strand that all the gray pieces are wrapped around. You're just going in between those two. Pull it up. And that's basically what it's going to look like in the end. Because I could, I, I, I could do it on this last piece, but because there's nothing there, when you pull it, it's probably going to fall. I'm not even going to worry about that one. I'm going to just leave it like that. Now I'm going to just take this piece. Run it up under there with the rest of them. Just like that. If I can get a hold of it. Just pull it. Do like you did the other ones, leave you a little bit of room. And I got, what is that? About a foot over. And I said I cut uh, from the measurements that are going to be in the description because this bracelet is bigger than the, for that description below. I cut a little extra. Yeah, it's about 12 inches I cut, but that's okay. That's okay. Okay, now we're going to do the stitching on the side. Here, let me pull. We'll use this. Stitching on the side. You've seen me do this before in a lot of my videos, and this is the easy stitch. This one's really easy. I mean, you can do it in like 10 or 15 minutes. Once you see how it's done, it's pretty simple. All we're going to do if you look, let me get this light over so you can see this. Okay, like I said, you've got a core strand, run this outer core strand on this edge. And you see how these wraparound pieces are angled like this. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to go 
just on the other side of this core strand through here and it's going to go through this little wrap around at an angle and come out it's going to go through above this wrap around and it's going to come out below right here and then you're going to just wrap here and go th through here and come out over here and you just it basically spirals down this core strand all the way down and the way you start it is you start it just like you did up here <coughs> now for this one I'm gonna do this side first so when I run when I anchor it I'm gonna anchor it on this side right now when I do the other side I'll anchor it on this side that's that's all there is to it and it's not hard. And I'll, I'll show you how I start this. And I'll, you know, obviously I'll run it out to the end. But I'll show you. i do three or four of them just so you can see how it's done. But uh, I'll come back at the very end once I've done both sides. And I'll do, do the cut burns and all that for the, you know, the finished thing. Now this, it doesn't take very much stitching. Measurements, like I say, will be below. Um. But I'm using, like I said, 95 for all intents and purposes. Actually, 100 is just slightly thicker. But I do that so it will be seen in between there. So let's start this out. Get the stuff out of the way. I'm going to go up under this gray piece that's running right here. Say that. Right. Pull it through. Just like before, leave you a little bit. I'll mash it down. Now you gotta find exactly where you want this to go through. And on this one, I'm gonna go through right here. See we can see this. This piece of blue right here that's running up and down, that's the core strand. And it runs all the way down all these wraparounds. So we're going to go just to the inside right here. But we're going to come out right down here. So you got to get an angle on it. You see what I'm saying? And it's not real hard. It pretty much goes right through there. You can see that. And you pull it through. Mindful of your twist. Holding this piece right here so you don't give it a tug. And all we're going to do is wrap it. You see, there's a here. Hang on, let me let me try this. Maybe this will help. Okay, you see where these two pieces wrap around? There's a gap. It, that gap right there between these two blue pieces. That's where it's going to run. Right there. And that's what you're going to end up seeing. Let's see, all we're going to do now, get this out of the way so you can see. We're going to just follow that little groove around to this inside of the core strand. Remember the core strand. And we're going to go through, but we're going to come out below this wrap. So when we go through, we kind of angle it down just a little bit. That's all there is. It's, this, like I said, this, this stitch is pretty easy, and it looks really good. Once you do this, I want to... See, this is bracelets. A lot of a lot of bracelets are like this. The only thing you gotta once you learn to do this stitch is easy. You can put it on a lot of different bracelets. But <coughs> the thing is, you have to determine what size thickness do you want to use. Do you want to use regular micro cord like a lot of people stitch with, or do you want to use something a little thicker so it won't get lost in that gap in there, fall into the crack and get lost and not be able to be seen. 
So, and as you do it, be mindful that it doesn't have a twist, and just kind of let it seat in that little groove right there. Once you get it to right here, pull it and it'll tighten it up. See? Very, very pop. That's popping. Makes sense. People say, ooh, the stitching makes it pop. Yes, this stitching. If you do it with the right colors and all that kind of stuff, ooh, it'll look good. But again, we do the same thing. We follow that groove around, just on the inside of this core string, and we're going to run it through at the angle, so it comes out right down here. See that? Push it through. Like I said, this stitch doesn't take 15, 20 minutes, 10, 15, 20 minutes, just depends. So it has to twist it, so we got to... Rotate this end over here. Make sure it's not wrapped or anything. When you get it in that groove, I usually hold it on the table. Press it down on the table as I'm pulling it up. And it pulls that tight. Bam. Oh yeah, that's going to look good. That's going to look good. It's going to look real good when I completely get it finished. Same thing. Follow the groove around on the inside of that core strand. Oops, oh, sorry. Follow the groove around inside the core strand. It comes out right there where you want it. That's all there is to it, man. It, that, that, this stitch is a pretty simple stitch. You can do it to a lot of bracelets, and it's very effective. And giving it that, that pop that we all know stitching is famous for. See what I'm saying? But there are a lot of bracelets by Cetus, and there's just a lot of bracelets in general that have this wrap around on that outer core strand that you can do this stitching with. Like I said, you just need to determine am I going to use regular size, the thinner micro cord, or are you going to use thicker 95? So it doesn't get lost and it can be seen a little bit better. Because some of the bracelets, you can use the regular micro cord and it looks great. It looks fine. But some, it tends to get lost in there, especially when de de uh, dependent on the color you're using. Like that, if you're using, like there, there's a contrast between that gold and blue, so you're going to see it. Even if I use the smaller cord, most likely it would still be seen. But, I decided to go with the thicker cord on this one. But that's all there is to this. Now, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and stitch this one all the way to the end, and I'll stitch this one all the way to the end, and I'm going to come back, and I'll do the cut and burns and all that, and I'll show you the finished product. And this one's not for me, so it's not going to fit my wrist, so I can't do the quote-unquote trial by fire that I do in a lot of my videos. But, we will... Put it on the sizing manual just to see. Should come to about right here somewhere if it's if I've sized it properly, which I'm pretty sure I have. But stick around, I'll come back and we'll get this one finished. Okay, folks, I'm back and I got that thing stitched out to the end, and buddy, does it look good! Yeah. Bring a light up there. Look at that. Okay. I'll give you something. When I got down here to this end, and I did this very last wrap around, what I ended up doing, if you can look, you can see it. Instead of simply wrapping around the end and just running it across and up under there, I thought, yeah, it's probably going to, it's not going to seat down in that groove very well. And it's probably going to try to ride up on this outer blue wraparound. So what I ended up doing is running it down and up under that core strand 
that those gray pieces are wrapped around. If you look, you can see it. It wraps around, and then I went down, and I ran it through. Now, what I had to do was I pushed it through, and I couldn't get it to go, you know, under. So I had to push it through, and it come out this this hole, which turned out to be a benefit for us. This little hole down here, I said it was here. It, the needle come through, basically, I'll show you. It come through like this, and I pulled it through. Then I ran it back up under there to get it. You can see where it is here. It comes up through here. And I just pulled it real tight. It pulled all of it tight. That way, that last little gold wraparound will stay in that groove. Does that make sense? Now, when I did the other side, just like I did over here, you see, since this piece of gold was going to stitch on this side, I did it on this side of this loop. Same thing with this piece. That this piece of gold that I stitched on this side, it's over here on this side. See? And you do it the same way. You just follow it down. And I've got one last one to do. I'm going to do it. Now this is going to most likely be a tight squeeze in here. Because as you do this, this thicker piece of cord, it causes these little wraparounds to shift slightly. And it, it gets, it's getting tighter and tighter as I'm trying to run it through there. So this last one's probably going to be a little tight. Yep, here it goes. Right through there. But if you look, you see how, okay, you see this blue wrap around, this blue wrap around, there's a gap, and that's where the gold piece is. But you see the, the gap right here, there's no gap. That's what happens as you're doing it, it's pushing that blue piece down so there's no gap. So when you go to pull this tight, you have to pull it pretty tight, and it pushes those two blue pieces apart it falls down in there in that little gap so you get it where you want it it's right there where I want it now I'm going to pull it and yeah I'm, I'm starting to feel it on my finger right there see that separated those two blues and that gold went down in that crack now this last one I'm going to wrap it around and I'm probably See, if I just simply wrap it around there, and I try to run it up under this gray piece, you see how it's going to tend to want to come up out of there? So I'm, most likely I'm going to run it up under that core strand on this side like I did over here. So let me, let me see if I can't do this. Let, let me zoom in just a little bit. Maybe you can see this as I'm doing it. Let me pull this light down here so I can see. I can get this to do what I want it to do. It's going to be, I don't know if this is going to work or not. I don't think this is going to work. Let me see. Let me get, let me look at this for a second, folks. So I push it. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. Instead of trying to run it under that core strand there, because I don't think that's going to work, I'm going to run it around. And I'm going to try to run it up under all this stuff and then come up on, come out on this side and go up right next to this piece of gold. I think that'll work. Let me see if I can do this.
I work it, I know I can get it through there. It just might just take me a second. That's why I always say be patient with this stuff. That's pretty daggone tight, but you see how I did that. Now let's see what it's going to look like. I push it through there, and I get it where I want it. Yeah, it's got a twist in it right there. Give me a second. It's got a little bit of a twist right here in this cord, and I don't want that twist in there, so I'm going to back it out just a little bit. And I'm going to rotate it as I do it. Yeah. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it. Hold the bracelet and I'm going to pull it toward me. And you'll see it kind of... Yeah, there we go. That looks good. Now, I'm going to just take this. And I'm going to run it up under... Right next to this other piece of gold. Yeah, that's a tight fit right through there, but we're going to get it through there. That's how tight it is. <laughs> there we go. Make sure there's no twist in it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut this one like I, like I did the rest of them. Get her needle out of the way. And I'm going to burn this one. Just a habit I do, even though I'm about to cut it off, I'm still going to burn it. Let, let it cool for a second. And then I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to look at it. Make sure everything looks good up here because I'm going to do this one first. Make sure everything looks good. Don't need, that needs to be tightened up or adjusted. Everything looks good. So I'm going to turn it around. And I found to make this burn a little bit easier, I'll try to take these pieces, get all four of them, and bend them back over themselves. That way they're sticking up as opposed to being laid flat against the bracelet. Because we don't want to burn the bracelet, we just want to burn the tips after we cut them. So kind of give them a little pull each one of them and then take them and kind of bend them back a little bit and then go to cut them. Now, in, in this instance, you might cut it a little bit longer than you normally would that way there's actually something there to get a hold of with the flame so you're not you see what I'm saying so they're sticking out so you don't get on the bracelet as much I'm gonna do it like this I can't see let me I can't see the flame on the torch <laughs> and I don't want to burn my bracelet here we go. What I'm doing is letting them all melt into like one big solid piece. And then we just smooth it out. That way all those individual pieces are now melted, melted into one. And they're not going to come through. They're not going to work themselves out. And always, you know, run your finger over it. Make sure it ain't got no hard edges or anything that's going to irritate your wrist. Yeah, let me do this right here. As much as I don't want to, I'm going to do this. It's got a little edge on it right there. I mean, I'm going to do this off screen so I can see it a little bit better. Okay, yeah, now it's smooth. Now we're going to do the same thing down here. We've got a couple more cords, so we'll have to be careful. We'll make, we'll make sure the front of it looks good. I 
I know the thing, if you look at that, you said the top of it kind of wants to angle off and the buckle. I'll fix all that here in a second. Before I take a picture of it, I've had people say, man, your pictures look so good. It's, yes, it's because before I take the picture, I make sure the thing's straight and it looks good. and you know, it has to go to makeup before you take the picture, right? Okay. Yeah, everything looks good. I'm going to do this the same way. I'm going to try to bend them back a little bit. And I'm going to cut them a little bit longer than I normally would. Good scissors. You can do it in one slice. You'll have to saw it. Okay, now this one, I'm going to catch it at this angle. pieces right there that I just cut, they're going in the trash. There are pliers out of the way. I always talk about my note cards. Here's some of them right here. My recipe cards, that's, that's some of them. Get the light out of the way. Now, speaking of light, let me turn this one on. Yeah, that might help a little bit. Okay, now, you see how it looks? It's not, it kind of, it curves around and the buckle's angled that way and this buckle's angled this way. I'll fix all that. Now, this thing's tight. I'm going to tell you, that thing is tight. Lay it down on the table. Kind of straighten it up a little bit. That buckle, tweak it back like it's supposed to be. That way it looks a little straighter. So when we take the picture, see how. For now, I mean, I'll, I'll do fine tune it once I get to do the picture. But that's how you do it. It's 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 not a hard bracelet. It just takes some time because you know, like I said, the overs and the unders of the actual bracelet. There's quite a few of them, but it's not a hard one. Tighten it up like I showed you. Um, the center stitch is not that hard, but it's got that extra step of going up under that gray so that it looks it looks neat and clean and tight in the end. So it just takes a little time. You have to be patient with this one. But it turns out it looks really, really good. Those colors look great together. Okay, so like I said, this is made for a seven and three quarter inch wrist. So we're going to go ahead and bend it a little bit. Put it together. Here. Oh goodness. Looks like a fit to me. But there you go, folks. That's how I make a stitched ode. Nabanga Naga. 
I guess is how you pronounce it. I have no idea, like I said. But I appreciate you watching. Give it a try. And give us a like. Give us a comment below. But with that, I'll end this one like I end them all. Keep it neat. Keep it clean. Keep it tight. Happy weaving, folks. <laughs>